Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about should you join a startup, why, why not, what are some of the pros, what are some of the cons, and what you can really expect. So like most programmers, you've probably at some point in time start, thought about starting your own startup or wanted to learn more about startups. And there's a great Start a Startup Humble Bundle going on right now. And uh, there'll be a link in the description. If you click it, you can help me out. So if you're interested in maybe developing a business idea a little bit further, there's a lot of books here all to help you go in that direction. And as always, you will help me out as well as help out the uh, charity code.org and Doctor with Borders. And you can choose if you want to uh, where your money goes, if it goes to the publishers, if it goes to me, or if it goes to the charity. So startups are a interesting thing because sometimes you don't know which ones are real. Sometimes you don't know which ones are fake and uh, which ones are trouble and which ones are going to be fun and adventurous and so uh, I think we should start at that point where a lot of times you'll have companies that are barely afloat calling them startups uh, when they are just really trying to get cheap labor at the end of the day so you gotta you gotta kind of be wary of that but for the most part startups are a pretty like legit startups meaning that they have funding they have money they're not worried about you're not worried about the bills uh, not being paid on time. Those are the exciting ones. The uh, the ones where uh, you are like I, I've interviewed at several startups, and one of the one of the companies um, they were very focused on money during the interview, which is an unusual thing. But um, the uh, one of the things that caught me really off guard uh, was the fact that they said that they don't have payroll and that they basically are going to handwrite me a check at the end of two weeks. Which is really concerning to me, uh, and they, you know they all. In that certain instance, they, they say, "Well, we just haven't got around to setting up payroll yet," and I find that very hard to believe in that instance. But uh, some of the pros of working for startups, there's quite a quite a few. <clears throat> One, it depends on the startup, but some startups are more willing to take on developers early on in their career so that they can mold them and and help build them out to the developer they want them to be. Uh, two. Oftentimes, if you are an experienced developer working at a startup, you can get equity. Uh, not like a massive share. It, it all depends at what stage of the startup you come in at. But you can get a piece of the pie, right? Which is really cool because if you are a believer in the product and if you're working at a startup and you're putting in the hours the startup demands, which typically a startup is going to want you to work a ton, right? You, they have some visionary or dreamer where they're like, this idea is going to change the internet of things market. This idea is going to be the new social media where people now send images of the back of their heads or whatever, whatever the idea is. And you don't know who it is. It's fucking crazy. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, <clears throat> you know, they're very excited about whatever it is, is my point. And they, they expect a lot out of that. And in return, you typically might get a piece of piece of pie, basically a piece of equity on top of your salary. <clears throat> and usually the way that it's been explained to me at startups, and I've had three uh, potential offers at, at, at companies at startups where I haven't, I haven't taken the role. But uh, the gist of it usually goes along the line of you get a little piece of equity the first year, you get a little more. Second year, you get a larger the third year, and you get the bulk of it the fourth year. Every place is different, but that's usually how those equity jobs go. And um, and then you get a, a salary uh, as well. Now, um, another cool thing is usually it's a less corporate environment, and this may not be something that – if you're just starting your career out, you're too worried about. It. You're like, yo, man, let me just let me go in any environment. I don't care if uh, it's third floor is hell. Uh, I just want that experience. I understand. But um, for as a developer and you you gain a few years of experience, you have you have a, a you know you have easier time landing roles. And so you may decide that the cubicle environment isn't for you or the super structured um, you know HR where you need to be very correct all the time and uh, on your toes, right, and uh, may not be for you, or that that you know you want to wear sandals into work and shorts, right? And for whatever reason, we live in a, a culture where you have to wear a collared shirt and pants, or you're unprofessional. Um, you know, you got to be clean shaven and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, it, and developers, by and large, kind of they you tend to get a little bit of leeway for whatever reason, because most of us are just slobs. <laughs> and so, but in, in general. 
in general in a corporate environment those are things that you expect to start up a little less so and that goes for a little of the weirder things as well sometimes you can drink beer at them right i had i've talked about it in the past where the the company was in the alcohol industry specifically in like a analytic sales aspect and but they were like you know they drink beers while they're there and uh you know just a little bit more of a relaxed environment where maybe they have nerf guns and all that sort of stuff to kind of hype up the the environment to try and draw potential developers to it which can lead to a very interesting workplace right i uh i know that it would be interesting to me just to have nerf guns just be able to shoot some fool in the face hey do my pull request to just cap them in the face that might be too aggressive uh but if you give me nerf guns and someone didn't do my pull request i might cap them across the room sideways double cat pull request baby pull First name pull, second name request, bam, and shoot him down and do my shit. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's going to be a, an interesting experience. Now, the the cons, as we mentioned, is you may not get paid. Uh, that 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 job may dry up, and that's a that's a big big con. Uh, another another thing is that even if you do get paid, that equity usually it comes with a little bit of a lower salary, right? They're trading you equity for a lower salary most of the time. Uh, not always, but most of the time. And what that results in is you putting faith that this project, this business is going to be successful. And that's not always the case, right? Uh, I think it's like nine out of 10 businesses fail. And, you know, maybe you're, you may be that one in 10 and it, it works out, but you are, you are risking something, right? That equity that, you know, you took a $50,000 salary instead of a $75,000 salary, but you got equity and you're, you were planning on that equity to be more than the 25 K, uh, difference that your salary would, would normally be, uh, to make that up. And you're there four years, the business crumbles. And then all of a sudden you, you lost out on a hundred thousand dollars of actual money in your pocket. Not to mention the fact that you probably stayed because you instead of taking like large raises, maybe they gave you a 3% raise or something, some nonsense. Uh, you probably stayed because you needed, you were staying for that equity the whole time, right? Because the longer you stay, the more equity you, you get. And, and so you, you're not in the position where you can jump jobs and get, you know, $10,000 raises, $20,000 raises. You, you're investing time for that equity that maybe cost you a hundred to $150,000 in, in theory in your, in your income, right? So the, it kind of ties you down to that place. And the average developer stays out of role for a year and a half. Um, and, you know, to get your equity, you're usually going to need to be there four to five years to get all of it. So there's a little bit of risk with it, but it is something that can definitely pay off. I think it's it's one of the one of the cooler things, and I kind of consider my last job a little bit of a startup. Now we didn't need to worry about funding because the company was already established in the in the military industrial complex. I guess would be the the like keyword, uh, the military training uh, industry, and but they had never been involved in software before, and so they were building out a team. Now, I didn't, I didn't get any equity or anything, but I will say that working on a smaller team on a project that's just starting out, you get exposed to a lot of cool stuff. You get to you get to have your hands in all pieces of the pie. Now, I've talked once or twice before about typically when we are learning and we're trying to get our break into the industry, we're kind of generalist, and that kind of applies to a startup as well, right, where you can now go and and check and you can now sort of do a little bit of everything i'm doing i'm gathering requirements i'm doing wireframes I'm building front end building back end doing qa doing deploy doing devops right and so you get all the, these little bits of information in every which direction which makes me like i i think that's really cool and then typically as you go to a a more and this this is a more general statement. This isn't necessarily always true. But typically, as you progress through your career, you might become more of a specialist, right? You may do full stack, but that's it. You don't do deployment. You don't do testing. You may just do front end. You may just do back end. You may just do DevOps. And you kind of become more specialized as time goes by. But as a startup, most of the time, due to resources, due to the nature of just trying to get business off the ground, they're not necessarily going to want to hire somebody for everything. So they might lean on you to say, hey, we need you to pick up Angular. We know you've never touched JavaScript a day in your life, but you're going to learn today. Uh, so uh, 
because uh, I mean that that's just the way that it goes. So startups are an interesting thing. I think when you are considering working at a startup, you should just kind of understand where you are at in your life. Uh, and understand that you are essentially taking a risk for a larger reward at the end of the day and just be okay with that. I don't think there's anything bad with it. I don't think there's anything necessarily good with it. I think it's kind of an equal trade-off, right? If you theoretically are taking a lower salary for some equity, you're just essentially applying a value for it. <coughs> and in return, you're going to a slightly different environment than you would in you know, maybe a larger corporate company. Uh, but that that's really all I had to say today, guys. I appreciate it. Appreciate you. Don't forget to check out the Humble Bundle if you're interested in that. Link in the description. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, support me on Patreon, join the Facebook group, all that shit. Bye. Hey, love, what do you think about joining a startup? No, baby, I don't want to do a Kickstarter. <laughs>Quick shout out to deviceplus.com. If you're interested in the latest IOTs, hacks, do-it-yourself projects revolving around Arduino and Raspberry Pi, they have some great how-to guides. I, I highly encourage you to check them out and thanks for watching.